In this first lesson, 10A, we're going to talk about perimeter area, surface area, and volume. And perimeter is the distance around an object, and those units are always in inches. They're singular units, so inches, feet, yards, centimeters, meters, um, and stuff like that. Area is the surface that fills that perimeter. So the area is the units that are square units, so square inches. Um, can be written both at using the word square, or you can write it with the exponent of 2. So in either one of these cases, you have something that looks like this, or you can write it in terms of using the exponent there. Surface area is the area of all the faces of a three-dimensional object. Okay, so it's, it's area, but it is um, each one of the sides, essentially. And then volume is the amount that fills a three-dimensional object. And with volume, volume is, in this case, volume is cubic meters or cubic units. Um, so we can either write it uh, using the exponent of three or we can use it writing the word cubic. Um, so one of the things to keep in mind is that um, there are formulas and you can look up all these formulas anytime you want to, but you can also just Google. Um, anytime you want to um, figure out something that's going on, um, you can always Google it. Um, just when we go to Google something, we want to just make sure how we um, clearly stated um, what was Googled. Okay, we can't just say Googled um, because that can be a lot of different things. So we want to make sure we're clear about what it is we're Googling. So let's do a few examples. And then the ones uh, that we, uh, I don't, finish and maybe just start, you and your team are going to work together and post those answers in a discussion post. So in this first example, a window consists of a four, by, four foot by six foot rectangular capped by a semicircle. Okay, and so we see this picture over on the right hand side. How much trim? And so trim equates to perimeter in this case. So our trim is equal to the perimeter. And so perimeter is the distance around. So I'm going to just start at the very bottom here, and I'm going to move all the way around this object and then come back to the end there. So I'm just going to add each one of these up. So I have four feet plus six feet plus now I have to go over the semicircle. And so I can look at the um, perimeter of a circle, which is this formula right here. Again, we could Google it if we want to, but it's just pi times the diameter. The diameter is the distance across a circle. And so that's, um, let me put this in parentheses, that's 4 times pi divided by 2 because we have a semicircle. We don't have a full circle, so we have to cut that in half, plus... And then we got to go down this long walkway, the bottom part or the length of this window, plus another six feet. And so now, in order to come up with this answer, we can just type this into our calculator the way we look at this. Keep in mind, um, if you're using your cell phone calculator, that's fine, 4 plus 6. But then when you get to that pi button, and um, if you're just looking at your calculator, you will not going to see the pi key. So you can turn your calculator sideways, and you should um, get more features. Or, you again, you can go to Google, and you can type in, you can just tell Google to cal calculator. And it gives you a calculator, and then you can see that it has lots of different um, symbols here for us. Um, you don't see the pi key here uh, that I can see anyway. Um, on your calculator, you will see a pi button. Um, so we are going to do, let's see what we were we adding, 4 plus 6. So 4 plus 6 plus parentheses, 4, and I'm going to just type in the word P. So I just typed in PI or just PI, and it automatically knows. I'm going to divide that all by 2. I'm going to close those parentheses, and I'm going to add 6 more, and hit equals, and I get my answer there of 22.28318, on and on and on. 
let's go ahead and let's see if the instructions tell us anything. It doesn't tell us where to round. Um, so a typical rule of thumb, at least for right now, is that we're going to let's round to two decimal places. So we have 22.28. So 22.28. And we got to label this. So this is feet. Again, singular units there. Now for the area, the area, and it's telling us, um, and we want the area of the glass and excluding the crossbar. So we're going to pretend that this, this whole glass is one sheet of glass. Um, so we have a rectangle and we have the semicircle. Let's see if I can make a semicircle. Um, so the rectangle we know is length times width. Um, and then a semicircle is going to be pi r squared, but then we're going to divide that by 2 as well. So we have uh, 6 times 4 plus the semicircle. So we have, now we need the radius. So radius is half the diameter. So we have 2, uh, so we have pi times 2 squared divided by 2. And we're going to type that into our calculator. And, or we can just, we can do this mentally. So 6 times 4 is 24 plus 2 times 2 is 4 because that's squared. But we got to divide that by 2. So now we have 2 pi. So if we go to our calculator, um, so we're going to have 24 plus 2. And again, if I just type in the letter P, it automatically knows that that's what we're talking about, and our answer is 30.28. And this time, since we're talking about square units, we have 30.28 feet squared. So I'm going to have you guys in your teams work on number two and present that problem, but here we want the area of the plywood. So we're looking for this area down here. And for a um, triangle, you know that the area of a triangle is going to be one half times the base times the height. All right, so let's take a look at the next problem. And in the next problem, we have, um, suppose your room is shaped like a figure on the right. How much trim would you need? So we want um, for trim, we're looking at a perimeter. And again, you um, and your team will take a look at um, coming up with the perimeter on one. Now let's talk about the carpet. So we need to how much carpet? So we're going to, that's going to be area. So our carpet is equal to the, the area. And because this figure is made up of a couple different, could, could, we could do a couple different things. We could divide this and have a rectangle, a, a tall rectangle and a kind of short rectangle over here, or we could make this a rectangle that have a long rectangle and then a short one right here. Um, it doesn't matter which direction you go. Uh, just as long as you figure out which one you want. So I'm going to leave it like this. So I get 12 times 5 plus 6 times 4, which is going to give me uh, a total of 84 square meters. All right, so now we want to, how much, um, if the walls are 3.12 meters tall, so the, the, how much paint would be needed for the walls? So the paint is actually going to be surface area. And so again, we want to figure out um, what, so if this wall, make this correctly, is 3.125 meters, we want to paint the wall. So the wall is going to be 12 by 3.125. So each one of these is going to be 3.125 meters tall. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of the sides, so 12 times 
three point error. There we go. Uh, leave it to technology, right? Three point one two five. So that's that one plus five times three point one two five plus eight. So now we're on this wall right here times 3.125 plus six times 3.125 all the way around plus four times 3.125 plus 11 times 3.125. So that would be the area for all the surfaces, right? Um, so let's talk about the next one. What is the surface area of the figure? I'm going to have you guys go ahead and do that one as a team. And then let's talk about volume. Um, so the volume. I don't know why this is doing this to me, but there we go. The volume is going to be um, how much the how much can be filled into this object. And so one way to think about it is standing this object up so you have two rectangular sides which means that those two are the base so we have a base of a rectangle or i'm sorry of a triangle so we're going to stand this up so we have the base of the triangle um, and we want to find that area so it's the area of that base times the height and so we have the one half times four times three for our triangle. Times the height, which is 11 centimeters. And in the end, we're going to end up with 66 centimeters cubed. So we have one more um, problem here in the notes. A water reservoir has a rectangular base of 30 meters by 40 meters, and it's 15 meters tall. It was filled to a level of one meter below the top, so we're actually only going to fill this to. Well, that's my dog's barking. Um, so. They're done now. Um, so we're going to fill this up to one meter. So we really have the volume is 30 meters times 40 meters times 14 meters. So that's how much is actually in the tank. And it says at the end of the summer, the water depth was four meters. So this is actually we have four meters here so we want to how much water was used so we want to find out all this water that's in here so we're going to subtract that where it's at so we're going to subtract out the 30 meters times 400 meters times our four meters that's where we're at and so if we type this all in we're going to end up with a total of 12,000 cubic meters of water was used. Then the rest of the question is how much remains? Well, the remaining is this portion down here, which, which is this portion here. So 30 times 40 times four. So we have 30 meters times 40 meters times four meters, which is our 4,800 meters cubed.